222 day we will be talking about XRP and XLM and how they tie into a CBDC in Australia, which also connects HBAR. There are some interesting ties into ELO as well, but we will begin with XLM. In April of 2023, the Reserve Bank of Australia began to test a CBDC on the Stellar blockchain, which was also at just about the same time as Ukraine and Brazil. The interesting part about a Stellar CBDC are that it would be on a public XLM ledger, and it also calls out Australia, Brazil, and Ukraine here as well. The Ukraine CBDC on Stellar aligns Stellar with the US, UK, EU, Australia, Japan, and others. CFTC advisory role with BlackRock and JPM, as well as its involvement in the $400 billion Ukraine construction bank is also interesting. But the ties into MoneyGram and UN are important as well. And the Ukraine pilot has a lot of direct comparisons to how a FedNow CBDC might actually be designed and implemented. From November of 2023, JPM processed 2.4 million Swift ISO 222 messages on the four services which went live on March 20th of 2023, which included Australia, and also times up extremely well with this announcement from April of 2023. I did talk about Australia a good bit in my APFII content, which is shown here. It has a ton of information in there, and the ties into Australia and New Zealand are extremely deep. To begin to take a deeper look into the Australia connection into HBAR, I got an article sent to me from Bolu5 about how Australian Payments Plus is now a Hedera Council member, which came from EFT POS who joined as a governing council member in 2022, bind with BPay Group and NPP Australia to form Australian Payments Plus. Here is the APP site, and it explains that exact tie here, too. If you go to the EFT EOS page on the site, it explains that they are offering cost-effective debit transaction processing on tap to pay on mobile solutions and are involved with entities such as Hoodie Bank, Commonwealth Bank, Fiserv, ING, and PayPal. And the whole offline payments thing actually ties back into what Velo is concentrating on with QR code payments in Southeast Asia. And I do have a bit more on that connection in here too. So in response to a video I put out a couple of months ago on XRP and HBAR offline payments, I was informed about some ties into Australia. In March of 2023, the Reserve Bank of Australia announced a research project to explore use cases for a CBDC which includes smart cards, and ANZ Bank is behind offline payments. Here is that announcement, and here in August 2023, they concluded that pilot. And here is the report on that. And if you search for Stellar, it talks about their involvement here, which the EAUDD, backed by a pilot CBDC was minted on the Stellar chain. Then if you search for Rent and Hedera, each of them are in here as well. Here is a bit more on the offline payment part of it, 
that was targeting the problem of EBACs addressing situations where online connectivity is absent, which includes outages and c communities that don't have the means to connect online or th those who are unbanked. And here it talked about offline CBDC payments via smart cards that can be loaded with funds. And there's also ties into Novati was looking into a stablecoin proof of reserve. And they wanted to build confidence in retail customers in stablecoins so that they become more universally accessible. And they were piloting an Australian dollar stablecoin with one-to-one -one backing by a CBDC that is independently verifiable by the customer to ensure better public trust. And Hedera was also involved in construction supply chain payments. Here is a little bit more from the Reserve Bank of Australia, where they were talking about a tokenized asset ecosystem. And they were able to conclude that t tokenized assets could save the bank billions of dollars annually in between transaction costs and capital savings. Here is a thread on the Stellar XLM Australia CBDC project. The pilot test will also feature uh, other participants, the DFCRC, and also in conjunction with the Reserve Bank of Australia. The body's role will be the issuance of a stablecoin, EAUDD, which will have its full reserve backed by the RBA and pegged one-to-one -one with the digital Australian dollar, which also calls out Stellar's involvement in other PBDC projects such as Brazil, Ukraine, and Mayuda. Here we call out the involvement of Nobody again, which has a huge involvement according to this map put together by the XX account, which is also caught out here on the Nobody site talking about that pilot program and is also called out on the Stellar site in October of 2022. It is also on the XRPL as called out in this June 2022 announcement. In February of 2023, Body's AUDD is integrating new protocols on Stellar to enhance its efficiency as a stablecoin. SCP-12 has to do with KYC and KYB that have to do with AML, fraud, and a couple of other things. But it allows users to complete their ID verification only one time on the AUDD platform. SCP-31 enables cross-border payments such as a currency c conversion tool facilitated by anchors on Stellar. For example, a merchant who transacts in USDC but wants to accept orders from Australian customers can collect AUDD from that customer because of SCP-24 and be automatically converted into USDC because of SCP-31. And I did call out a connection to Velo here that I thought was particularly co coincidental. And that is because of Velo's connection into Body, Lightnet, and IAM Commercial Bank as shown in these screenshots here, which also has to do with how Velo is connected into Ripple and Stellar. Ripple partner Niam approved as a financial service provider in New Zealand. Actually really helps us globalize much faster. I think a great example is one of the customers which we've got, say, BTEC, for example. BTEC is a customer in Brazil who uses us to process payments into quite a few markets across the globe. We would have never met BTEC if it was not for RippleNet. 
right? Because uh, we were actually solving a problem, but we did not have a sales force in uh, Latin America acquiring clients for us. So that was actually done by RippleNet. So I think what uh, RippleNet really helps us do is go to markets which we are not present, help us really articulate a solution, etc., much better than what we could do. So I think uh, RippleNet is a very strong partnership where we're seeing scaling happening much faster on RippleNet than actually acquiring customers directly. If I found it interesting that the example called out there was actually in Brazil, which then goes back into Stellar and XLM again. Nyam spans over 40 countries, including Japan and India. Registration allows them to potentially offer a variety of financial services to New Zealand businesses, such as virtual accounts, debit and prepaid cards, funds collection and global payout options. The expansion builds on their established presence in Oceania, particularly through partners in major Australian spend management forms. They are also a card issuing partner for Wheel, an Australian spend management platform. And to connect all of this back into what I was in initially explaining. Stellar is also connected into the pan called out here.